Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Isn't this notebook just the sweetest, cutest, springiest notebook you've seen? And you know what else? It smells like spring too because I've got some of the perfumed flowers on the front of it and it just smells so good. This notebook is just a standard size notebook. So the paper inside is eight and a half by 11, but the overall notebook itself measures eight and three quarters by 11 and a quarter. And on the inside, I've just got standard paper from a, a legal pad. And this is just such a quick and easy project that I wanted to go over with you guys how I made it. And the reason why I'm making this is because when I did my craft studio tour, I showed you guys some rolls of paper that I get from Hobby Lobby and it's the paper studio paper and this week all paper studio is on sale for 50% off so you can get this roll for three dollars and it's 20 feet of paper and it's 14 inches wide and I love working with it because it really is a good quality paper so because I had a couple of questions of well how would you use a roll of paper versus a 12 by 12 or an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet I'm going to show you how I use this paper and I use it for all of my projects. I use it to make paper purses. I use it to make notebooks. I use it to make boxes. But today I'm going to show you how I use it to make a notebook. So I am going to turn this and this into this and it is going to be fabulous. So let's get started on making this. Okay, so what we'll need is the rolled paper. And the way that this paper is, it really is um, in a roll. So that means that it doesn't want to stay down flat. So normally what I do is I just lay something on the edges that are going to hold it down while I place my papers. So right here I've got, I've got it weighted down. And what I have are two pieces of chipboard that measure eight and three quarters by... 11 and a quarter and all I'm doing is laying that down. I've already put tape on the back and now I can slide this over and I can place my other piece of chipboard. Slide it over just a little bit more so I can give myself a nice border between the two. And then I'll just come back and cut off this and I've still got a lot left on the roll as you can see I've used this a few times so I'm going to just come down the middle here and cut this and then I'm also going to trim off some of this and I'm going to trim these all the way around Okay, so I've got my um, paper covered and I'm also folded up my edges all the way around. So all I'm doing is just making sure that I've got it folded all the way around. And then I'll come back with my scissors and I'm simply going to miter cut my edges. And miter cutting simply means that where I fold it here and then I fold it here, you have an intersection and all I'm doing is cutting through that intersection that's imprinted on the paper. Okay, so my miter cutting is all done and now I want to fold over my edges but before I do, I am simply going to place down some paper, the triangle that I just cut off and I'm going to place it down so that if I have not cut my miters as well as I would like, I have got paper underneath that matches and it'll cover up any imperfections in my miter cutting. And this was a wonderful tip that we got from Francine Langlois and I have received so many comments on this tip and just how helpful it has been. So thank you so much Francine.
Okay, so we have our corners covered and we're protected just in case we didn't get our miter cut right. So now all I'm going to do is come back with my glue, place some down, and then I'll go ahead and get this nice and stuck. And I'll use my bone folder just to get that glue worked in. Make sure my edges are nice and tight and crisp. And I am using the reptile glue, so I'm still working with this one. And overall, I'm very pleased with it. So I'm gonna turn it over here and do this side. All right, so I've got both of these covered. And now I'm ready to place my liner pieces. And the liner pieces will measure eight and a half by 11. So what I've done is I have these and I want to use these as my liner and I have applied adhesive to the back using my sticker maker. So I'm just going to pull this off, move this one out of the way, and then I will position this so that hopefully I can get it nice and even on all four sides. And that looks pretty good to me. So I am just going to smooth this down to make sure I get a good stick. And I think that that is a beautiful inside to a notebook. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. So we'll go ahead and do the other side. And pull that off. And the sticker maker that I use is the Creatopia by Zyron. Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore, but luckily they still make the adhesive for it, so I'm able to get really good use out of that machine. I love it. Okay, so we've got these all covered. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and punch our holes so that we can turn this into a notebook. So the way that I am going to punch my holes is I am going to use my cinch and it's made by We Are Memory Keepers and it's designed to punch holes for book binding. And so I've got a little grid here and I've got these pegs and each peg represents a hole that will be punched. So I'm going to leave all of my pegs pushed in right now because I want all 12 holes to punch on my project. So all I'm going to do is take my board. The machine has this little flap here. So all I'm doing is making sure that the ruler is pushed all the way against this flap. I am going to place my board in. And then all I'll do is pull down my handle. And you can see I've got holes, but not enough to do the whole project. So now what I'll do is I will take this, slide it down out of the way, and then I'm going to take my board, and on the side of the, of the cinch is this little knob here. It goes up and down. So I am going to take this board and place that little um, peg here in the second hole from the bottom here. So all I need to do is place that in, push that peg down into that second hole, and then I need to come back and make sure that I don't need to remove one of these pegs here. And I do, I need to remove my number 10 peg because I don't want a hole punching at the edge of this board. So when I take out the number 10 peg, it's going to punch all the way up from one through nine. And that's exactly what I need. So when I take it out, I have a perfect board. So now that I've got the front, let's do the back. And when you put the back in, you flip it over to the opposite side. So I'm going to do this one more time for anyone who has a cinch machine or is thinking about getting a cinch machine. So. I want to make sure that all of my pegs are punched in so that I can get 12 holes. And I've got this little flap here 
is pushed up and my grid is pushed all the way in. So I'm going to place my board in and pull down on my handle. And I'm trying to pull down so I don't shake my camera. And now I've got 12 holes. So now I want to take that second hole that I have here and position it on that nozzle. And then I'm just going to push that nozzle down. So then I want to look at my pegs and I can see that if I leave the number 10 peg in, it's going to punch right there on the edge. So I don't want it to punch. So all I need to do is pull it out and it won't punch a hole. And now I've got the front and the back to my book and it's going to be great. And to do the paper for the inside, I follow the exact same process. So I push this back up and make sure all of my pegs are in. Pull down on my handle. I'm going to pull out my number 10 peg. And I will slide the second hole from the bottom into the black peg on the side. Press down. And now I have all the holes I need to be able to make my book. Okay, so I've already done my other papers to complete my book and I have 100 sheets of paper in this notebook. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to take this and I'm still going to use my cinch for this. I want to take this, turn it here to the side where it's got this little um, series of holders and that will hold my binding wire in place. So all I do is take my binding wire and lay it down on that and it'll sit just like that. Let's slide it over one so that my ends are great. And it'll sit just like this. So at this point, all I want to do is place down my top and my bottom. And then I can put my papers in. And that just helps me to be able to get all of the papers on. So then I've got this. And the back side of this is designed to press down and form my coils. So I'll just do a little bit of this with you guys. So you can see what I'm doing. So all I'm doing is I've got my coils are here, under here, trying to get a picture. And I've got this handle here. There's a nozzle on the side. There's a knob on the side here. And I know that I'm using one inch, so I just set the knob at one inch. I'm going to put my papers in. Then I'm going to put my folder in and then I'll just start pressing down to get my coils rounded. And then I'm going to slide over just a little bit because my pink bar isn't long enough for the whole thing so you just have to keep feeding it through. And you want to keep pressing it until you get these coils completely closed. Okay, our coils are all done and we have a really gorgeous, gorgeous mint and gold polka dot notebook. Unfortunately, my battery is about to die, so I'm gonna go ahead and just dress this up with some flowers and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I'm back. So what I did was I just went ahead and added my flowers to the front of this book and I think that it turned out beautifully. 
So when you look on the inside, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous notebook. And I love this paper. And then when we come back out to the outside, I place flowers in a group of three along the edge. And I think that it just helps this book to pop. So let's bring in the other one so that you can see the two beautiful notebooks that we have. And both of these books were made with this roll of paper from the Paper Studio by Hobby Lobby. So if you guys have not had a chance to check out the roll paper, again, I encourage you to do so because the paper is great quality and it's a great value for the money. So I hope that you've liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. And if you are not a subscriber to my channel, but you've enjoyed this project, or maybe you've enjoyed another project of mine that you've seen, I would love to have you join my online family. Y'all have a great day. Happy crafting. And we will chat later. Bye.